Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of Creativity Techniques. In this episode we're going to look at PESTEL analysis, P-E-S-T-E-L, which is a, a business tool that allows you to look at a situation or an idea from different perspectives. The origins of PESTEL analysis are actually somewhat elusive, so it's hard to know who created PESTEL or when or earlier forms of PESTEL, but we definitely know in the 50s and the 60s in American business schools PESTEL or PESTA version of it was being taught. I think one of the earliest um, versions of PESTEL that we're aware of was published in a book in 1967 by Francis J. Aguilar. So there was Francis J. Aguilar there. Um, so PESTEL is an acronym or more correctly an initialization and P-E-S-T-E-L stands for Political, Economic, Social, Technical, Legal and Environmental. And there were earlier versions of PESTEL called PEST or SLEPT or PESTE or things like that. So as we said, political, economic, social, technical, legal and environmental. So let's say we were discussing the computer. We could look at the creation and spread of the computer from the political point of view. What were the economic factors that encouraged the creation and spread of computers? What are the social factors? What are the technical factors? Well, that's easy. What are the legal issues that encouraged or discouraged the spread of technology and computers? And then what are the environmental concerns around the spread of computers? So what we're going to do is look at each of the six perspectives or lenses one at a time and understand the kinds of questions we might think around each one. So first what we look at is P for political. So what are the political factors in this issue, in this situation, in this design, whatever the concern is? Let's say we're designing something for a particular country. What is the political system in that country? What are the political issues or political systems within our organization or within our idea space? Um, what laws, labor laws, or what kinds of restrictions do we need to think about? Um, what kinds of subjective meanings do people take from things? What is the nature of the power structures within the group or the organization that is looking at this situation or problem. So that's P for political. Next E for economic. So what are the economic considerations? General economic factors like inflation or interest rates might be worth thinking about. There might be cost considerations to think about. What is the cost of the design? What is the cost of the problem? What's the cost of fixing it? Is it do we want to have full fix? Or do we just want a temporary fix? So a temporary fix is very easy, just treating the symptoms, but a full fix often requires a root cause analysis. How much will that cost? If we're designing something, how much do the raw materials cost? How much will this problem save us? Or if we, if we design something new, how much money will we charge for it? We can also consider, are there cheaper ways to do this, or are there more expensive ways to do it to make it more luxurious? Moving on to S for social factors, we could think about cultural issues and uh, whether those cultural issues constrain or perhaps even enhance a specific design or a specific concern. When we think about culture, the kinds of things I suppose we would concern ourselves with socially are things like language. Does our problem or our design have language considerations? We could look at things like population distributions within countries the average age of the population, the balance of genders in the population, the level of education, the level of literacy within a, a country or, or our target market, our target demographic. We could also, or we should always have an awareness that different symbols, different shapes, different colours have different meanings in different societies and they have a different societal resonance. So it's important to be aware of and respectful of how, how symbols mean different things in different cultures. I suppose if we're thinking societally as well, we always think of societal issues. For example, um, does giving children toy guns encourage violence or promote violence in some ways? Does buying people Barbie dolls encourage stereotypical views of gender and things like that? So societal considerations are very important in looking at situations. Technology, well technology is easy, what are the technology factors relevant to a particular issue or problem? We'll always remember with the term technology, we might be thinking of low tech, medium tech or high tech. Something low tech like a stick or a curb cut, something medium tech like a, a steam engine, something high tech like a, a laptop or something like that. 
So uh, the term technology itself, techne, logos, simply means a craft of the hand that we discuss or talk about or write about. So any craft, any tool is technology. When we're thinking about technology though, we're always thinking about advanced technology and innovative technology. So are there innovations in terms of, I think there's really exciting innovations happening in terms of material science. There's really new exciting materials being produced. Obviously there's exciting computer technology always being produced and in terms of biology and biological research there's very exciting research there that might help us solve problems or improve our uh, situation. Is it possible that we can license technologies from organisations or is it possible we can produce a technology and license it to organisations? Is the technology of use to our design or our situation or is it an impediment to our design? Moving on to L for legal factors, so L we think about what, what laws concern, are there antitrust laws, health and safety laws, copyright laws, equity laws that apply and are there possible situations where litigation or arbitration may occur? Is it worth contacting the Irish Patents Office about this issue? Are there jurisdictional issues? And when we think about data protection, we know the transfer of data, there's always jurisdictional considerations. Um, do we need to think about the United Nations Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities? Do we need to think about accessibility, usability and universal design? So there's a range of legal issues to concern ourselves with. And finally, the last E is environmental. So what environmental factors are relevant to our design? So are there ecological and environmental considerations that are worth taking into, into account? Um, are there different environments in which this design or this problem are occurring in or are planned to be in? With different levels of air quality, different levels of noise, uh, with different levels of background radiation or even variable lighting schemes. So how does that influence our design or help us address our problem? And clearly, if we're thinking about environment, we might think about the recycling issues. Are we producing the product from biodegradable materials? And is there potential for that within our design? Um, is it possible to contribute to uh, a model of green business? Because re recyclable and green business is all the fashion. And do I need certifications like LEED, L-E-E-D certification or something like that to enable me to complete my design? So that's in essence pestle analysis. When we think about any situation or problem or we, we want to discuss a topic, we could ask our students to discuss it from the political, economic, legal, technical, social and environmental perspectives. We're doing a pestle analysis. Thank you very much. See you on the next episode.